Discover hope and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of Hope. Well, hello, my friends. It is the first Thursday of the month, and that means it's call-in day. I'm taking callers with questions that will apply to everyone, not private readings, but questions about the afterlife, the spirit world, spirit guides, life in general, God, you name it, because I may not have the answers, but my team, Sanaya, is right here. I spent a few minutes connecting with them, and we are ready to take your calls. The number to call is 816-251-3555. So I'm coming to you live on, what is today? February 3rd, 2022. If you're, call, if you're listening live, you can call in. Otherwise, you're in the archives and don't bother calling that number. And we're also recording, so I'll be able to put this on my YouTube channel later. So I get to wave at you and see you. Those of you who've been following me may recognize a different backdrop today. We're back on the road in our big bus. We're heading down to Vero Beach, Florida, where I'm going to be giving a workshop this Saturday, my Let Your Spirit Soar workshop. And it's funny because I've, we live in South Carolina now, but I'm so used to the warm weather. When I got on the line here with our sound engineer, Jeff, I said, uh, can you hear the sound of the air conditioners in the background? Is that gonna bother the recording? And he said, air conditioning? It's 12 degrees here. So he's back at the Unity Village or nearby, and uh, here I am in Florida. We just arrived at this campground one hour ago, and it's just like it always is half the year when Ty and I take the messages of hope on the road. We get settled real quick. I set up my lights and my cameras and the microphone, and I just can't wait to talk to all of you. If you happen to be in the area this Saturday, there are more seats, just a few of them left at Vero Beach Unity, where I just can't wait to connect with everybody. So like every first Thursday of the month, when we take call-ins, I will put the names of the people I talk to on a little strip of paper. And at the end of the hour, I'll do a drawing. And whoever's name I select from those who call will get their choice of one of my online courses. So that's always a little bit of incentive to call in. But I can see that we have a whole queue here of people waiting. So let me see. I think I've covered... All but one final piece of news I want to share with you. My book, Still Right Here, just came out this week in audiobook. I recorded it right at Unity Village in the big tower where the radio station is. Recorded it last October, so that was big news to find out that it's available now. And uh, I re uh, recorded it, let me see, over a period of a couple days and relived the beautiful story about how four couples with children across the veil came together on a sailboat trip with our kids in spirit along for the cruise. All kinds of evidence that shows that those who have passed truly are, like the title says, still right here. So you can find that on Audible or Amazon. Check it out, please. So for those of you who've been waiting in line, let me put my glasses on so I can see the names. Our first caller is Kelsey. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Yes, indeed. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing okay. It is very cold here, so I'm jealous <laughs> of your warm weather. <laughs> it's just hard to believe how our country has such a varied climate, huh? Yes, yeah, it's an ice storm here, so I'm in Ohio, so. Okay, well, we'll send you lots of heat from my heart. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my question, I guess to tell you first, I'm a young widow. I'm 32. Um, my husband passed away of COVID a little over a year ago, so obviously my plans that we had and plans that we have for future and kids and things are gone, and obviously that's very disappointing, but um, my question is, um, when people, you said that people who cross over have a different perspective than we do, but I'm just curious if that happens right away or, um, you know, do they get there and say, oh, I get it, but I'm still disappointed because we had great plans. Um, so just wondering, you know, I guess how that works. Can they understand the big picture and still be, be disappointed of their, their loss of things that we had planned for? 
Well, first of all, let me just send my heartfelt condolences to you as all of us just send you uh, our love and strength and courage to get through this time. It's uh, never part of our plans, but I'm so grateful to be able to share the message that truly he is still with you. All of those who are listening, who are grieving, that's the whole point of this show and of my work. And I know it beyond any doubt that he, he still exists. The question is such a good one. And the answer is across the board, there is an immediate awareness. Oh my goodness, I'm so much more than the story, the role that I was playing. They definitely have the bigger perspective. Some may choose to cling to that story longer than others, but they still are aware of the love that surrounds them and definitely can understand what the life in human form is about. So this understanding takes away those negative human thoughts, feelings that we have when we're grieving. And so while we might call it sadness and disappointment, that understanding coupled with the incredible love that permeates everything across the veil changes that the soul's awareness truly is all is well. And they're, they just do their best to send us love, to uplift us. And I know he's trying to get through to you and let you know that. It, these are not just yeah. platitudes. This comes through in reading after reading. And if you read the experiences of thousands and thousands of people who have had near-death experiences, that also backs this up. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for taking okay. my call. All right. And I hope you'll go to my website, to the gifts mm -hmm. page. So it'd be suzannegeisman.com slash gifts, because there are quite a few meditations and other gifts there that will help you learn to connect with him yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, Kelsey. Thanks for calling. It is so hard. I want to share with you a quote from my wonderful friend and neighbor, Irene Vuvalides, who's the vice president of Helping Parents Heal. She talked to a mom yesterday who's grieving and said, I just want my old life back. Her daughter passed within the last year and she's really having a hard time. And Irene told her, you, you know, you can't have that life back, but you can create a new life that includes moving forward with your loved one and includes happiness again. And that was all that, that mom needed to hear to say, wow, yeah, we just have to let go of those dreams we had, but realize we can still create new dreams. Doesn't make it easy, but it doesn't mean we're stuck in grief forever. So let's move on to our next caller. We have Debbie in my old home state, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, thank you very much for taking my call. Um, yeah. I was wondering if um, I have a rather difficult life, as I'm sure there are some listeners out there who do. And I know, um, I know when you have a loss of close family members, um, it is really, really hard especially in a case where you've lost most of the people that you love dearly. But um, because of that and health problems that I have, I, um, I was trying to get an answer. I mean, I've heard so many times that people who, um, you know, like we pick what our life is going to be before we come here, um, you know, into, into um, you know, this, um, like the physical form. And um, I was wondering um, if I'd been trying to meditate and get answers. And finally, um, not too long ago, I did get a couple answers that I thought were, if you want to call them an answer, a couple flashes that I think um, I, I was wondering if I was on the right track as to why I came here, what my life was to be. I, I'm wondering if I could tell you what happened and if you could tell me whether or not that 
if anybody, uh, you know, could help um, on this the issue, first, if I'm first, on the right track at all. The first question is, how did it feel in your heart? Um, it seemed, I asked the question, why am I here? And I saw something that was very meaningful to me, uh, but it was sort of, I guess, maybe extreme. I saw Jesus on the cross. Okay. That's what I saw. I'm not, I, if, you, then, if you're watching this on a video, I gave a big smile and it may look like I was laughing. It was joy. It was a burst of joy because people find that extreme. But in deep meditation, these kinds of experiences actually are, are welcoming and true and trust them. So I, I, it's a beautiful message just to see that, to have that loving figure come to you. But you received a message as well with it. So um, rather than get into your personal story and get into a reading here with a lot of callers waiting, the main message is, as I asked you, I advise everybody, how did it feel in your heart? If you feel it was too, too good because you don't deserve it, that's human thinking. But the soul already knows, trust this. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'm okay. getting a big thumbs up as I tune into you. And it's just a matter of you need to understand that you are not only human. The bravest of the brave come into these lives that are so challenging, especially those that have more than what we consider the fair share of loss at younger ages and that most of the family passes before us. But we come here knowingly and grow as a result of it. So trust Trust, trust what you're sensing. I love that you got a message and that you had those visuals. So keep that practice up. Keep asking different questions from different angles and always, always give it that litmus test of how does it feel? Not what you think. How does it feel? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, um, I, I did another question. If I just, I asked how I was doing. And I saw like a, a field of white flowers, nothing but white flowers. And I thought that was beautiful too. It is. I'd like, I'd like to take it as a sign that I was doing pretty well, <laughs> considering, or, or you know, whatever, what life hands to you, you know. Yeah, it's wow. beautiful. I mean, spirit world doesn't always speak in sentences. And this is something that many of my students don't understand. Or I don't hear my guides talking, but to get that imagery when you ask a question, it's like a shorthand from the spirit world. White flowers, clearly white is that color of positivity and love. It's a big thumbs up from the spirit world. All right. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And I love listening to you and, um, uh, God bless you. I, I think what you do is wonderful. It gives well, a lot of us courage. It's an honor. Thank you for calling in, Debbie. Thank you, Suzanne. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is, this is the advice that I love giving to everybody. And it's very interesting when people come to a psychic, and I'm, all mediums have psychic abilities, but they ask questions about their life. And mostly what we're all looking for, if you're honest with yourself, is validation of what your heart already knows. So we go to somebody who, who we know has kind of an open channel to the higher realms, but you all have that open channel. It's just a matter of coming to trust it. And I love that Debbie is getting those visuals and asking the questions directly of spirit instead of just wondering, wondering. That energy just goes out and doesn't really land anywhere. But when you ask it directly of those in the spirit world, how am I doing? Am I on track? And you get an answer in whatever form. That's a beautiful thing. All righty. We have Anne on the line from, I can't read the tiny <laughs> letters where you're from, Anne, but welcome to the show. Tucson. I'm from oh, Tucson. Tucson. Okay. Yeah. My parents lived Hi, in thank you. for over 20 years, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Yeah. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you a quick question. So I love the bless me method. I use that all the time. And I was just wondering, you personally, when you do the bless me method and you go to that higher place, I call it the celestial place, mm -hmm. do you spend most of your time there 
talking, sitting in the silence, or do you talk to your guides and God and whoever shows up there? What a great question. And for those of you who are new to my work or new to the show, the Bless Me Method is my process for going from a normal waking consciousness to an expanded state of awareness that's really optimal for connecting with any aspect of higher consciousness, your own loved ones who have passed, your guides, the angels, spirit, God, the source itself. I can tell you that I'm not going to go into the whole process here, but again, if you go to my gifts page, there's a video there. It may also be on my video page and it's definitely on my YouTube channel under the title seven steps for connecting with higher consciousness where the seven steps are b l e s s m e so in answer to your question ann when i get to the final stage the e in experience it depends on what the intention is each time so in the very early stages when i first began using the process I would sit quietly because I hadn't yet made a very clear connection with my guides or with the angels or my in intention at the very beginning was to connect with my stepdaughter, Susan, who passed. So I spent almost all of my time silently with the intention, let me feel whoever's here. And because I had, didn't yet have that good connection, it was a lot of empty <laughs> silence. But that ended up being the training ground, as I call it because to maintain that silence, noticing the random thoughts that come and go that I know are just my normal human conditioning was perfect training for all of us for connecting with higher consciousness because we need to create that space so that when we finally do make a connection with someone, we hear them. So these days, I'm so accustomed to just dropping immediately into a silent state that it's almost fully conversational right off the bat. Although I'll tell you that this morning I sat down and immediately got my daily way message from my guide Sanaya and then was nudged, why don't you just sit quietly for a little while? So they actually guided me to just enjoy nothing but silence. How has it been for you? Well, I, I go there pretty fast now because I do it so much. But I do talk to my guides when I'm there and I talk to God and my husband. And, and then I go, okay, I'm going to spend some time just in the silence. But it, then I find myself, you know, again, discussing questions and stuff with them. So um, I didn't know because so many times people talk about meditation just being really quiet. But I heard you say the other day, and one of the things I listened to is it's not all about being quiet. Why don't you just talk to your guides while you're there? So I was wondering how you handled that, but that was a great answer. It's, it's beautiful what you're doing because what can happen if we do spend all the time talking is – it's always about our agenda and truly those we're talking to do have that bigger perspective. So it's also a matter of when you're talking, are you only asking about your own questions or are you leaving time to say, what is in my highest good today? Then you turn the reins over to those in spirit. So I love also that you're, you're allowing time for both and that it hopefully doesn't become routine. Just flow and dance with spirit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I always ask them, what do you want me to know today? You know, Perfect. that kind of a thing. Or what am I, how do I serve today? Those mm. questions, you know. Let me tell you, I hear from my guides, and we are well pleased with you. So that's beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Good. All right. Well, thank you for calling in and definitely a question that helps everybody. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. I know you're going to stay warm in Tucson, so I don't have to tell you to stay warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Oh, now we're going to Sally, who is in Vancouver. Now, I don't know. You're on the Pacific Coast, so you could have a little bit of that warming air. 
How's the weather in Vancouver, Sally? <laughs> it's not bad. It's raining. Oh, it's raining. what a surprise. It's warm to rain. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, I'm a student of yours um, in your mediumship classes on uh, the shift. Okay, great. And I'm shaking right now. My heart is just pumping and we've had a couple conversations in the past but it's what I'm about to share it's a miracle for the record books and only you could really embrace this one I was and it's only a minute I was in meditation and um, Sally is not my name Uh, but because this is personal I can't reveal my name Um, in meditation I asked about my marriage and um, where we're going and if I'm now on pension so a lot of my concern also is financial assistance and so I asked I said would I be taken care of and I saw and heard uh, the name of a divorce lawyer I knew eight years ago when I worked for criminal justice he was a friend of a friend so I've never had a reason to connect with him and I thought oh that's interesting he just popped into my mind like that and anyway I said thank you uh I thought actually a friend of mine would be calling that he knows and it would be a connection about that I come up to my kitchen and I'm about to make breakfast for my husband who is still sleeping and I thought of a recipe I haven't thought of in years old old cookbook I remembered the cookbook I went to my boxes pulled out this cookbook and there was a bookmark in the middle of this cookbook I opened it to the bookmark well it wasn't a bookmark it was the divorce lawyer's business card wow I know how you felt this is This is what happens when you live what we call the awakened way, just consciously connected to spirit, divinely guided. I'll bet you that took your breath away. I'm barely breathing now. And I remember seeing it and going, that's impossible. For one, I've never had his business card. There would be no reason for me to have it. The last time I cracked that book open was back in my culinary days, about seven or eight years ago. That particular recipe was in my mind. I hadn't thought of him forever. My question is, this was a full manifestation of what just happened 10 minutes earlier in meditation. I haven't called him. It feels like the beginning of the end. Yeah. And the question? Question is, is there another interpretation? Hmm. Here's the key. There are limitless interpretations, but from the fear I feel in you, you already know what the answer is. Now, you've been guided to a divorce lawyer, but that doesn't necessarily (laughs) mean divorce is coming. You could get some advice that surprises you. So I would clearly advise you not to take it as a foregone conclusion, but it's very clear you are at least supposed to contact this person. You see? One step at a time. One step at a time. And wait till he hears that the universe referred me to him. (laughs) (laughs) Here's how I got his card. (laughs) Now, this is such a great lesson for everybody who's listening. Once again, those who think your spirit guides are going to just tell you everything. Number one, people are always asking me, my students say, how do I know it's not my imagination? Well, you were not thinking about that person and it just bubbled right up in your awareness from, yes, the universe. Who was it? Your guides, an angel, God? And the answer is yes, it's all spirit, all one mind. You had a strong intention and you asked the question directly of spirit and you got an answer that was unexpected. Now that second part is truly where the veil parts and you see that's a physical manifestation of a card, but you were also guided exactly where to find it 
from something you hadn't mm. thought about in a long time, that recipe. And that is how spirit works. So I would send a big wave of gratitude to the universe for giving you that answer. Yeah. Good advice for everybody. And then I would reach out to that attorney, but again, not already deciding what the outcome is. Flow with this because you're very clearly in the flow. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And thank you for that call. Wow. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, yeah, Sally. Yeah, we yeah. don't have enough time to take another caller. Let me just invite those of you who are listening to go to my website, SuzanneGeesman.com, because we are back in doing events in person. And I'm so excited to be going to the Omega Institute in New York this summer. And there are limitless seats there. So I hope you'll join me for a Making the Connection weekend, a whole weekend together in a beautiful setting. So we're going to go to a break now. When we come back, I have quite a few callers already in the queue, so can't wait to hear what we're going to discuss. Welcome back. You're listening to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier, if you're watching me on the video, my background's changed because I'm in my bus. And I want to give a shout out to my awesome husband, Ty, who's out walking around the campground while I'm doing this show. And I was so proud of him. He backed this big bus into this spot. What a pro he was. The, even the guy at the campground said that's the first time he's ever seen anybody do it in one shot like he did. So I, I always tell people, yeah, well, he used to drive a battleship. <laughs> All right. I thank all of you who've been waiting online. Our next guest is Sal, who's from the state where I live now, South Carolina. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to ask. Um, I've been getting into, um, I guess, like, you know, um, spirituality and everything lately. And I really, really um, enjoy the message that you give and everything. Um, I guess like uh, the question that I have for today was, um, why do some people experience, I guess, like, um, I guess bad experiences with, um, you know, like they say that they, they have bad experiences with like, um, spirits or even like extraterrestrials and stuff like that. Like I, um, because I'm under the impression that, you know, we're in the universe made out of love and everything, right? Source, you know, is there for us, our spirit guides. So, yep. you know, why, why do some people go through those ordeals, you know? Okay, because this is, this reality here, our earthly body reality, is the reality of duality, where we have ups and downs, good and bad, all those opposites. And we as souls come here to experience the fullness of life. Now, it's all in how we interpret it. From the soul's level, we don't use labels like bad everything is an opportunity and at the soul level we actually can't be harmed all is always well and in perfect order when that message can filter down to us here that is one of the greatest things we can learn but i hear a lot of you the moment i said that you said oh how can you say that what i'm going through in my life right now is in perfect order that's the human limited perspective. And all of the teaching we get from those in higher realms is shift from the limited human perspective to the higher, less limited perspective. The soul is expanded awareness and everything changes. So if any of you attended my monthly connection webinar this week, I actually addressed the whole topic of darkness and light. And darkness is the absence of light. It's not a power in itself. So when you encounter darkness, all you need to do is bring in the light. And that is an analogy, of course, but for higher consciousness. And we find that light by looking at our thoughts and saying, wow, look what I'm giving power to. Darkness doesn't have its own power. It's the lack of light. So we shift our thoughts. All experiences with extraterrestrials are not necessarily bad or scary. We draw to us experiences that round out the soul's experiences here. So 
It's all a matter of what focus we take, the limited human or the bigger picture of the fullness of all experiences. What looks like a tragedy to one person is not a tragedy to others. In our human life, we would all agree that certain things that happen to humans and that what, what humans do to other humans are definitely tragedies, but they also lead to tremendous growth. I can use the example of so many people who have a child pass, who has a spouse pass, anybody they love passes, and we think it's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And yet, in the future, we come to look back and say, I'm so much stronger now, especially since I know they're still with me. So I could go on and on, Sal, but that's it in a nutshell. I hope that's helpful. Gotcha. So basically, it's because we live in a world of like duality and it's, you know, like some people, because um, I've heard that, um, you know, people, people's souls sort of like know what they're getting themselves into before. They I mean, do, but physical. let me be very clear that souls never come here to do harm deliberately. The soul is aligned with love and knows that it's going to face difficult choices. And when the choices are not aligned with love, that's because the human role has forgotten they are a soul. Okay. Okay. And, and just to be clear, we shouldn't really fear, I guess, like these like dark, like spirits or like even like, you know, like, um, aliens or anything like that right like it's it, it's something that we shouldn't give much attention to i guess watch the shoulds just know that by giving attention to it you're actually drawing it to yourself so you want to draw the light to you bring in more light so you can actually set the intention that i i know i am the light i will only attract goodness to me and if something comes and does cause you fear normally that will be just your initial human reaction because we're programmed for that fight or flight survival mode but once you feel that you can learn and train yourself to shift to soul's awareness and affirming you are the light tell any thought forms that may be frightening you you must leave as i bring in the light and then you can examine from the neutral soul's perspective why am i giving this power why am i allowing this to cause me fear it's, it's really a powerful path that we're on once we realize we have multiple perspectives we can take. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for those deep <laughs> questions. Good ones. All righty. Thank you all for calling in. We're all working together to help everybody understand this challenging life a little bit better. Let's talk next to Rosa. Got your name on a little drawing slip here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And blessings to you, Suzanne. Igualmente. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Muchas you. gracias. Uh, Suzanne, I've been um, uh, asking my uh, spirit guides, angels, brother Jesus, and Archangel Michael for their divine guidance and support when I wake up in the mornings. And I felt drawn recently to purchase the book, A Course in Miracle. Okay. And I was uh, wondering whether um, it is a direct and accurate transmission of our beloved brother Jesus. As you ask that question, I absolutely hear my guides say it is a most accurate depiction and as accurate as one can get as long as you remember that all transmissions must go through the filter of the scribe. And what they mean by that is the message will always be skewed just a little, depending on how open the person receiving the message will be, because they're all going to have their own belief systems and ability to tune in. But they're giving a big thumbs up to the Course in Miracles that it is, uh, oh, well respected across the veil. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. All righty, let's move on, lovely, to Machi. I love your name, Machi. Welcome to the show. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. <laughs> thank you for taking my call, and thank you for all your beautiful work. It's just so thrilling to study with you. Oh, I love um, that. Suzanne, yeah, it's just awesome. Um, Suzanne, what's, uh, this is essentially a call about trust. 
in trusting um, my experience of the multi-sensory world. But I think I'm going to ask it in a different way because you're so you. What is there? Is there a value in resisting, or is there a val? What what might be the value of hiding my light under the bushel, as the expression so beautifully goes, or not the value really, but what is the purpose of it? Because um, I, I ought to, I know enough now, I, I to to trust, but I'm still dragging my feet. Okay, what is the purpose of resisting? I can hear my my main mediumship guide Brenda laughing. It's because humans learn best from pain, pain. <laughs> and when we resist, we're putting up a wall and blocking the natural flow of consciousness. We are consciousness and expression. And it's very normal for humans to do this. We come in just free flowing beings and then we learn to distrust. We learn not to trust our own connection with spirit. We learn to trust our smartphones more than we trust higher consciousness. And so mm -hmm. how many times do we have to say, if only I had listened to my intuition, if only I had <laughs> done this be before we finally start to learn to trust. It's those painful mm -hmm. moments that really put us on the path. And trust me, <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. I just did it last week in a reading. I didn't say something that was so fleeting when I got it from across the veil, but I just didn't trust that this crazy thing the spirit said was true. And it was, you know, and so now I'm more dedicated than ever to trust every single thing. And will I be a hundred percent with that? Probably not because we will always be human as long as we're here. And it's the way we're wired. So beautiful. So, so, so you you managed to find a loving, beautiful way to, to, to share that teaching with something that I think a lot of us put a negative spin on. So, thank you. It it will be my teacher. It will be my teacher. Excellent, excellent. And and if you can laugh at yourself, it's well. <laughs> my my wonderful team of assistants and I we always joke about how at the soul level the soul is trying to get us to trust. It's just our higher aspect, the soul, just, huh, it's everything. And so picture yourself, your soul, sitting on a cloud with other souls eating popcorn. And they go, oh, she's gonna do it again. She's not gonna act on what we're gonna do. <laughs> you know, they're eating the popcorn and say, this one's gonna hurt because she's gonna be disappointed. Oh, there she goes. You know, just, just <laughs> if you can make light of it, what a difference, huh? And then, Mm -hmm. Just, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do better next time. And I will do better next time. Thank you so much. And now I have that beautiful hysterical image of the guides and the angels and the loved ones up on that cloud. Yeah, past the <laughs> popcorn. Their foreheads, like, ay, ay, ay. Hey, I can't let you go without asking the, the origin of Machi, your, your name. Oh, well. Um, my godmother's name was Madalena. She's from Spain or, or Magdalene, and her nickname was Macha with an A. And then when I came along, I, my parents were good friends with her, and um, she insisted that my name be Machi. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you have just such a lovely energy, and thank you for adding it to the show today. Oh, my goodness gracious, Suzanne, you're the greatest. Thank you so much. All right. Take care and bye bye. Okay. Bye. All righty. Let's move on here. Mary in Michigan. I'll bet it's downright chilly there today. Yes, it is. We have lots of snow and it's, it's quite beautiful out. Oh, that's one thing, huh? I have white sand yeah. I'm going to be walking on after the show. I don't want to make you jealous, but you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Suzanne, <laughs> I want to thank you. So much for your amazing energy. Um, I, you know, I follow you and my gosh, you're in all these different places and you have all these different things you do. And um, it's pretty amazing. And I, I appreciate all the effort you put into teaching us and caring. I'm on for a us. mission. I'm on a mission. Yeah, you, are. <laughs> you are. You are. Um, my question kind of has to do with that. I am a retired teacher, and when I was teaching 
Um, I worked with youth that were very troubled. So I would, you know, meditate every morning Good. and pray. And I was really very disciplined. Um, since I've retired, I've kind of lost that, um, that discipline. And I, I'm open to lots of different, I've learned different healing modalities. And, you know, I do all sorts of different things. I'm very open to different things, but I've lost that discipline and <laughs> what I don't know I don't know that I'm alone I'm, I look at people and well, I think that we all get on, yeah we get on something for a while and yeah for a week we're really good and then we lose it so what what can you suggest okay I suggest first of all that everyone check out my sip of the divine video on YouTube we are getting such tremendous feedback from people who start that. And I challenge everybody to do that three minute practice every day for three weeks until it becomes a habit. So you, you may have lost the joy in meditation because maybe you're spending too much time in it or you're not getting um, the rewards from doing it. It's not pleasurable. The sip of the divine is great because you take a question into it and hopefully you get some kind of an answer or guided to something throughout your day. What I really would love to see you do, Mary, and everybody, is to have a miracle mindset. What's going to happen today from my daily connection with spirit? Know that it's not just you doing this, but you have a team of helpers, we all do, across the veil, who are ready to interact with you and have some fun. So it doesn't have to be a serious discipline commitment where I have to sit silently and learn my lessons. It's instead, hey, I want to have a miracle today. Why don't you send me a sign or something that knocks my socks off? Or how about you lead me to somebody that I can make something magical happen for them? Set a goal that's something fun and interesting and miraculous and loving and beautiful happen each day as a result of your practice. How does that feel? That really changes that perspective completely. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And, and make it priority number one, your connection with spirit every day. For me, it used to be working out, you know, being a former military officer. That was your top priority. You had to stay in shape. You were tested on it. So every day working out. And once that check was in the box, then I could get on with the day. But these days, it's my connection with spirit, not just because of the discipline, but because it helps me keep my priorities right throughout the day. When all of you listening or watching have the priority that I'm going to remember, I am a soul first and foremost. This drama here gets in perspective. And then we know we have a team that we can turn to when things go awry as they do in this human life. So setting your connection with spirit as your number one priority will pay off throughout your day. And then you won't want to miss it anymore. So thank you for allowing me to share that lesson with everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. Let's move on then to Let's see, Patricia. Yeah, you've been waiting the longest, Nick. So, Patricia <laughs> in Vermont, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for your patience. Oh, sure. I just love listening to you. Um, I and everybody else. They all, everybody. You can, know, you can feel the love, can't yeah, you? Right? I love this community of kindred spirits. It's just beautiful. It is. It sure is. Um, I have been on a mission ever since my friend lost her son um, to find out more about this, and this is how I found you. And it's been such an amazing um, term, change for me in my life as far as the way I see things. And Good. it's ended up helping me, and too, as far as how I see things. Um, my, uh, my question is, um, I have been, well, lately I want, a lot of my friends have lost somebody and I want to help them. And that's, I have like a 
drive to do that. So I want to learn more on how to do that. Okay. Um, one of my questions, I don't know if um, I've been drawn to, is um, earthing and grounding to heal. Um, I don't know if you know anything about or, or if Sanaya knows anything about that, but I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Well, I've, I've been drawn to so many modalities and earthing really does interest me. What I would just simply recommend you do is pull that thread, as I say, when you're, when you're snagged by something that interests you. Just follow it, flow with it until that nudge goes away. And if you end up doing something else, follow that too. This is one of those journeys where those of us who are on it, we end up going down a lot of rabbit holes. And I know many of you listening know what I'm talking about, but it's fun. As long as it's fun and joyous and helps you serve others, it will remain a beautiful journey that you're on. I love that you feel drawn to help others, but the most beautiful part is you noticed already that as you serve others, it just increases the joy in your life. So I'm not going to speak a lot about earthing other than I know that there is definitely something to it. And I've actually gotten some of the products and worked with them for a while. It's not my mission to go that way anymore, but just have fun exploring all of these ways that we can harness consciousness to serve others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Suzanne. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. All righty, we still have time for more callers. That's awesome. We're going to go here to Carolyn or Caroline. How do you say your name? It's Caroline. Caroline, welcome to the show. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, I've been listening to your show um, in the podcast now. I probably found you about four months ago. Um, so I probably listened to uh, the archive um, on a daily basis. Oh, wow. I'm out and what have you on my spiritual journey and um, I'm actually ringing up um for a question um sort of on behalf of my daughter so my daughter's only seven I'm calling from the UK and yes. um, didn't get through I, I I thought I was just about to put the phone down so I thought I will get through tonight and then she was in a car with me one day and um she heard some of the podcast and she said mommy can, can we phone in and ask a question so um, I said, yeah, yeah what, what should we ask? And um, her, her confusion is that she's, she's, I would describe her as an old soul. Um, she's seven going on 17. She's naturally very um, intuitive um, and comes up with all these things that, you know, you just think, wow, where does, where does she get this stuff from? Um, but her confusion is to where we actually come from and how science and spirituality merge together. At seven years old, um, she wants to know this? Sorry? She's seven years old and she wants to know this? Yeah, yeah. So she's seven years old and she says, you know, I, I believe in, you know, that there's something more than this and that we come back and um, we're all sort of uh, made of, of this goodness and what have you but she says oh, you know science says we we come from you know the the apes and so she said we god couldn't have made us and i i did so i don't know how to explain that to her you know sort of how the two merge together and i wondered if and i had a, a wow. good answer okay. for her. Because it's beyond, it's beyond you know me. you know the answer is and i'm not going to address this to a seven-year-old and we're going to address it to you because you will be able to help her not just with one answer but as a guide on this journey that she's on clearly she is an old soul and her soul already knows the answers and it's going to direct her to ask these questions but the the way you you come to learn is educate yourself by start looking online at all the many different ways we can look at who we are, but then experience it for yourself. So wouldn't it be kind of fun to try the sip of the divine? I talked about this very simple three minute practice together each day. And that's the second E. And I talk about the keys of, of evolving as souls. Number one, educate yourself by finding out more, looking online, watching videos. The second one is experience for yourself. And the third E is engage. So the sip of the divine always involves asking a question of a higher being. So what fun to sit with your daughter and engage 
an angel or a guide and say, what do we need to know? How is it that we're created? The most important question you can start asking is, who am I? And not believing what everybody tells us. So if you two together can start examining belief systems of different religious systems, of what scientists say, and asking, how does that feel? Is this truth in our heart? You two are going to have the most wondrous journey together. Question everything. Test it in your heart. Okay? Okay. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. And thank you for calling okay. in. I'll, I'll... No, that's... Beautiful. That's awesome, isn't it, everybody? Well, that little alarm, I don't know if you heard it or not, that means it's time to do the drawing of those who've called in. I have my little slips of paper here. I'm not going to ask one of my puppies here to draw it or they might run off and eat it. <laughs> so here we go. And Debbie, I hope you're still listening, but you are the winner today. Call Debbie's name. So please reach out through the contact page on my website and my wonderful assistant will help you to choose one of my courses and get that to you. Let's see. We are coming up on the end of the show. So many good calls today, and we could really summarize all of them with the awakened way that I teach. That number one, you are not only human. You're, we're all souls. And number two, we're part of one big web, that beautiful call where the woman heard the answer to her question and was led right to the recipe book with the card of the very name she heard, shows we're part of a web of consciousness. And the third principle of the awakened way is you find connection and healing through expanded states of consciousness. So please spend time in the silence every day and come to know we are love in full expression. I love you all and just truly enjoyed spending this time with you. Have a great week and we'll be back with some great guests the rest of the month. Bye-bye.